Hey, Service Nation, so excited to be with you today. Uh, I am really enjoying um, getting to know you guys and sharing uh, what I've learned over the last 20 years and helping you guys get out of the field, work less, do more. Um, and it's just, it just been awesome. So if you are also getting value from the show, make sure you subscribe, rate, and review. Let us know that this is bringing value into your world. Uh, let me know. Feel free to shoot me an email, Mike at growing, uh, service and let me know how I can serve you guys better at a higher level. Um, and yeah, as we're just starting, the subscriptions, ratings, and reviews really make a difference to grow this thing. Uh, if you go to growmyservicecompany.com, you can get into our Facebook group uh, when our book, uh, when my book comes out, you'll be able to get a copy of that, all sorts of good stuff. So um, today we are going to talk about one of my favorite subjects when it comes to running a company, and that is to do less and grow faster. Um, so many people, uh, just, the majority of folks I coach do more and it actually slows their growth which is one thing if they love doing more, but they don't, right? They want to do less um, and they want to grow fast, but they think those are mutually exclusive and that's just not the case. So when I started my business, if you guys are, maybe some of this sounds familiar to y'all, um, I invested everything that I owned and money that I had borrowed, right? That other people owned. Um, it was really stressful because I was all in, right? Uh, I mean, I was all in anyway, emotionally, mentally, like I know a lot of us are where we're just so committed to our business, but that was kind of the internal all in. I was externally all in. I'd bet everything I had on this thing and effectively on me, um, which was a stressful way to go, right? I, I, half of me is like, I don't know if I'd recommend it, but the other half's like, I don't know if I'd recommend any other way because I had a family to support, right, and bills to pay, and I would have done anything that was legal and ethical and moral to succeed at that thing. A, because I had the you know bills to pay and, and obligations, but really more than anything, I wanted to prove to myself and my family that I could do this, right? And I, I got to be honest with you, I wish I could say I was a smart businessman or I was just really committed, and, and you know the committed part was true, but based on how hard it was to start. I probably would have quit had I been able to quit a couple times, right? So for all of you guys and gals that are in that position where everything's in your business and this is like a do or die situation, certainly from a stress level, it's not the best way to go, but from an effectiveness, it can be super effective. So just see it as a mixed blessing, right? It can be a bummer, but it can also be, um, it can also be something super helpful. All right. That said, um, because I was so desperate to prove myself to, to me, to my family, to the world that I could actually do this. Um, but I didn't have any real business training or any skills, right? I didn't go to college or, and a lot of you guys, you know, having coached many, many, many owners of service companies, I know that a lot of you don't have your MBA in business and the few that do realize it doesn't really help you in the real world, right? So, um, based on that kind of foundation, um, I worked way too hard, right? That was the one thing I could control. I couldn't control my upbringing, my knowledge. My, I mean, I, I should have gotten better educating myself earlier, but um, I just was too focused on my lack of skill, my lack of education, my lack of money, right? I had a big bar on steel to make this thing happen. Not steel, but beg and borrow. Um, so I just worked way too hard. That was one thing I'm like, well, at the very minimum, I can I, can, I cannot work this bad boy. Uh, and I, if you want to hear the whole story of, of how that is, go back to episode two, what does fun have to do with grow your, growing your service business? Uh, I share that whole story. But the long story short here is I was really frustrated because I sacrificed my family, my well-being, and everything I just gave to the business. No matter what it asked in terms of time or money or sacrifice or commitment, I gave it um, and had that been helpful to my business, that would have been one thing. But looking back, it actually hurt my business and actually cost me my family, which eventually cost me all my business stuff. So um, I want to share with you today how to avoid as opposed to kind of doing the dumb, dumb uh, way I did of figuring this thing out. I want to have you, they say that smart people learn from their mistakes, which I've certainly done, but geniuses learn from other people's mistakes. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to benefit from the tuition, <laughs> the hard knocks college tuition I paid. I want to, I want to see if you can get the lesson. Um, so like I mentioned in episode two, I talked about my divorce. Um, and again, this is 15 years ago. For those of you that know me, my wife, Natalie, and I have been married for 10 years. So I don't want anyone to worry. She and I are fine. Everything's good. This is actually 15, 20 some years ago. Uh, when I went through my divorce, um, for the first time, I wasn't interested in working more or at all. Believe it or not, I felt just not interested. I don't know that I physically or mentally or emotionally could do the level of work that I had done before. 
and I just did the bare minimum. Um, you know, looking back at it, it's not like I was zero st strategic thought about it. I just did what I could do. I did the bare minimum. I was by far the least prepared to grow a business financially, emotionally, mentally, energy. Uh, I was so broke I couldn't afford to pay attention, right? So bad times. Um, and for the first time in my career, I wasn't physically or emotionally able to just outwork my lack of systems or my lack of knowledge or my lack of um, organization in the business, right? The reality of the situation was just to pay my child support, alimony, commitments, taxes, and live at the, the poverty line, I had to earn like 75000 bucks a year. And if I didn't, I'd go to jail, right? You tend not to pay taxes or, or alimony or child support. They'll throw your butt in jail. So seventy five grand was a minimum I needed to make. And it was just kind of like the most I could do to get out of that. So the beautiful thing, one of the beautiful things that happened, and again, in previous episodes, I kind of give you different facets of how this all worked. But the, the one of the big ones, if not the big one, was I was forced to only work on what was the most important, right? I didn't have the emotional energy to take on all the problems that – I had taken on before I was willing to do or, or outwork it. Right. I had to, because I only had this much attention. Um, and I felt like, you know, we always feel like the business needs way more attention than we have. I was forced to kind of just deal with the things that were most important and believe it or not. Um, even during that time where I was broke emotionally, financially, every way, you know how to be broke. I was broke. Um, I built my first seven figure business in just a couple of years during that time. So it's weird when I had, the support of my family and the financial resources were a little better. And I wasn't mentally going through a divorce, which you know, took it out of me. I, str I worked and worked and worked and worked and worked. I just couldn't kind of break through that barrier. But then when the divorce happened, all these other bad things happened that would have taken me back six steps, lack of money, lack of time, lack of interest, right? All that stuff. And I actually went further faster than I ever had before. And I realized it was a combination of living my core values, my culture. And if you just, we spent the whole first week of, if you just listen to the first three or four or five podcasts um, or videos that we did, it was all on our culture and our beliefs and stuff like that, how we use those to, to make, make our business successful. So it was a combination of living by my core values and um, focus, right? Just doing the things that I should do and not all the crazy things that I, I wanted to do, right? I discovered that culture and focus actually beat the pants off of working faster, or growing fa or beat the pants off of working harder when it came to growing faster. Um, I literally went from doing... $20 an hour work 90% of the time. And again, this is a great time if you're if you're driving or listening or watching wherever you are, just take a minute and think through, if we're being honest, what percentage of the time do you spend doing $10 or $20 an hour work, right? And $10 or $20 an hour work is really typically anything that has to be done the next day um, or something that you could pay someone 20 bucks an hour to do, right? So if we've got techs out there making 20, 30 bucks an hour and we are doing the, the work of, that our service business is in, right, then we are doing 20 or $30 an hour work. So whether it comes to payroll, that's something we can outsource. Certainly buying supplies, paying bills, doing uh, payroll, um, you know, customer conversations that are not large, you know, if it's, if you've got a contract that that's worth tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars, that might be a little different. But if you're just, you know, dealing with a customer that's got a, you know, you know, $400 part for your plumbing company or $400 ticket for your plumbing company, that's, that's $20 an hour work. So think about how many, what percentage of your time is spent doing $20 an hour work versus more. I went from doing 20%, $20 an hour work about 90% of the time. And if I wanted to work more, cause 20 bucks an hour, you typically get paid what you're worth. So if I'm doing work that's only worth 20 bucks an hour, guess what I get paid? About 20 bucks an hour. So if you just work 40 hours a week, uh, 20 bucks an hour is about $40,000 a year. Um, and I learned, I finally made the transition from if I'd like to make $80,000 a year instead of just working 80 hours a week, right? As opposed to doubling the time I, I, I work, I need to move to $200 an hour work, right? So that is the key. If you're writing stuff down and you're looking for the one kind of big takeaway, <laughs> We need to a, identify what the value of the work that we're doing is. And an easy way to do that is what would I have to pay someone else to do that, right? To run the culture of your company. I don't know if you could pay anyone to do that properly. That's kind of your job to um, do payroll. That's a $20 an hour thing to um, 
perform landscaping services or fix an air conditioner, right? That might be 20 to $50, right? Like, you know, it depends on the skill, but it's still not 200, 300, $500 an hour work. Um, and the cool thing is once you start upgrading the quality of work that you're doing, right? Um, a, it's more fun, believe it or not, because it, it, you get to flex your muscles, your kind of mental and emotional entrepreneurial muscles. Um, but you start getting turned down bigger and bigger opportunities, right? I remember thinking at one point, man, if I can make $100,000 a year, that'd be a big deal, right? And which is really just about 50 bucks an hour if you work 40 hours a week. And then I was like, wow, if I can make $100 an hour, that would be phenomenal, right? And then um, as you as you start increasing the value that you bring with the work that you do, um, you have, you, you get to work on things that are more fulfilling, right? Cause again, say we're just doing the work that we do. Say we're, you know, we're an electrician, uh, we own an electri electrical company and we go in and, and wire up a house that has some value, right? But it's just going to have to be done again and again and again, where you start doing systems, processes, building culture. These are things that you do the work on once and they work forever, right? So that's kind of the higher dollar stuff. If you're trying to go, what's high dollar versus low dollar? A, you can figure out what you'd have to pay someone else to do to do that work. And then B, you can um, move into, if you do it today, how long till it has to be done again, right? If you can do the work once and get paid forever, that's typically higher dollar work. If you have to keep doing it over and over again, that's typically lower dollar work. Um, and again, I, I went from thinking, man, 150 grand a year is a lot to 100 grand a year is a lot to 100 bucks an hour is a lot to turning down speaking gigs for 10 grand for a 90 minute keynote. Um, not because I'm allergic to money, just but because I have other opportunities that are more valuable to my community and to, to the people that I work with and serve. Um, that 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 wasn't a good opportunity for me. So the secret is to increase the value that you bring per hour instead of the hours you need to put in to bring value. Um, I'm going to say that again. If you're writing stuff down, there's a great opportunity to write, write something down. Uh, the secret is to increase the value you produce per hour as opposed to increasing the hours that you need to work to produce value, right? So if I go, again, let's just use our uh, pool cleaning friends. If I go clean pools all day, you know, maybe I make a hundred grand a year. Um, but I have to keep doing it to make the money, right? The, the, um, to increase the, that's uh, to make more money. I have to increase the hours I put in to create value. But if I hire somebody, right, I increase the value of the hours hiring somebody to do pools or clean pools for me is much higher uh, value. I can, maybe it takes me 20 hours to hire that guy or more importantly, 50 or 60 hours to put a, a system together and then four or five hours a week to hire everybody forever. Um, but that guy stays for two years and makes the company a couple hundred grand. Obviously, I've increased the value I brought to the hour as opposed to the hours I bring to, to value. So that allowed me, believe it or not, even with me and my business, my financial situation being the worst it's ever been, um, that ability to focus and increase the value I brought in a given hour allowed me to build my first seven figure business. I'd worked for years and years and years. And I think it only took four or five years to build my first seven figure business. Once I made this switch. And then the second one took me about two and a half years to build. And this last one, gosh, not even that. Um, so the focus is a real thing. So once I realized that it was more about how I spend my time than how much time I spent, I started investing in the systems um, and training to grow myself first and my business naturally grew after me. That's one of the things we always tell our clients. Um, you know, we kind of lure you in with systems and processes, which we actually absolutely provide. But uh, once you get in, we're like, all right, I was just kidding. We're really going to grow you as an entrepreneur and then the business will magically grow on its own. And of course, we give you systems and processes as well. But the best systems in the world with an entrepreneur that isn't ready is not going to get you anywhere. But the committed entrepreneur that's got the right mindset and we, we grow that human being, we give them the systems and processes, holy crap, that person can kill it. Um, so once we, once I had the systems and processes in place in my, in my service business and every business after that, I could focus my time naturally without having to wait for a crisis to like cripple me, right? So the good news is, and we're going to try and keep everything simple because the focus of this broadcast is to do less and grow faster. Hey, Daisy Ewing in the house, one of our millionaire mastermind clients and all around nice people. So I realized there are really just three aspects to growing any service business, getting clients, fulfilling the service and tracking the money. That's really it. So you have to get clients. Nothing happens till somebody make, writes a check. 
um, fulfilling the service. You have to do whatever it is that you say that you're going to do, uh, obviously with a high level of, of expertise, and then tracking the money, right? You got to make sure that you're doing it for less money than it costs you to do. There's money left over for profit and overhead. Once I understood that, that there's really just three main systems that I need, and the they, they don't have to be that complex. You, you combine those three main systems with culture and core values. I realized I could just systematize each of those three pieces of the business and remove myself almost completely, right? And I spent, I, I did it. I spent over a year from my uh, last construction company, which is a you know, service business, uh, running it with a 10 minute, from all over the world with a 10 minute daily huddle. That was it. I was probably in the office well under 30 days that year. Um, and this enabled me to sell my last brick and mortar business so I could focus on helping other owners of service companies use culture and these same systems to focus and do less and grow fast and really how to increase the value that they put into the time as opposed to the time they put in to create value. So not only um, did I figure out how to grow so much faster, I grew as an owner and I was able to use those systems to make my business provide the life that I wanted as opposed to sacrificing the, the life that I wanted to support my business, right? And it is okay early on to sacrifice for your business, right? Um, we talk about, you know, everyone wants a balanced lifestyle. I think that's good. But certainly when you're just starting your business and maybe, you know, it, it's certain limited periods during, you need a time of being unbalanced, right? When I started my business, I was not balanced. I was working a ton. And if that's just for three or six months and you've got your family on board, and you're on board and you can do it, that's fine. But when it turns into years and years and years and there's always a new crisis and you're always unbalanced, that's a problem. So really important to grow as an owner so we can be in charge of our business and we decide what the business is going to bring us in terms of money, in terms of freedom, in terms of time. And we decide what we are going to give it in terms of money and time, right? And we got to make sure that we are in charge so the business supports us as opposed to us supporting it, right? We are not our business's life uh life support system. It needs to be our life support system. And that one discovery of focusing on what I needed to do and, and increasing the value I brought to the table every minute as opposed to increasing the minutes I brought to the table helped me has helped me serve thousands and thousands of owners of service companies to get time, freedom, money, freedom, all that sort of good stuff. So if you were like, that is what I need, I would like to have those systems. I would like to make that switch as opposed to just working the same hour over and over, I'd like to work better hours, more effective hours and get a different result. And it's so funny, by the way, people will say stuff like, oh, I've got 20 years experience. Well, most of the time they don't have 20 years experience. They've got the same year of experience. They just duplicated it 20 times, right? And as an owner, if you're stuck and you're kind of at that ceiling and you just can't get to the next step because you're either working as hard as you can work or you can't make any more money, you need to be able to figure out which lever to turn, which system needs to be fixed to kind of free you up to move the next step. That's what we do. We'd love to help uh, give you that service. Um, if you would like more, the full story of everything I've learned over the last 20 years, um, subscribe, rate, and review to our podcast, our YouTube channel, um, and just direct message me on Instagram, subscribed, just that one word, subscribe, and I will get you my book, I'm a Freaking Genius, Why Is This Business So Hard, um, which is a complete story of all the, again, it's a great way to take uh, the tuition I paid millions of dollars figuring this crap out and figuring out how to do it for free, uh, you know, so you can make your own smarter, better mistakes. So uh, just go to Instagram.com forward slash grow my service company, um, direct message me, just the word subscribed, and uh, I will believe that you subscribe, rate, and reviewed, uh, referred us to other people that desperately need to grow their clean their 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 service company. Uh, and I will I will get uh, a copy of my book to you so you can grow faster. Also, if you want to grow to go to growmyservicecompany.com, that will give you the opportunity to join our our group, get on the list for when stuff happens, and we we come out with cool new stuff. Um, it's all right there. Anyway, Service Nation, make sure if you have any questions about how to work less grow fast, do less, grow fast, engage in the community. Let us help you grow your business. Let us help you get the freedom and money of time and money that you got into this business for and get some, um, you know, get some other professionals that want the same thing. Uh, it's so much easier to do as a community, right? I try to do this for the first five or 10 years alone and it sucks. So uh, can't wait to get to know your service nation, grow my service company.com. Again, if you want to copy my book, just uh, direct message me the word subscribed and we'll get you hooked up. Talk to you soon.